new hex. Creating your own Mighty Space presets is so easy, especially with the app. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create your first Mighty Space preset. And I'll even show you a couple of really cool tips and tricks along the way. Let's get to it. What we're going to do at this time is we're going to go ahead and create a very basic and easy to understand preset. I'm going to use the app in order to do this. So I've got my guitar plugged in. I've got the Mighty Space ready to go. And at this point, I've got the app up. Let's go ahead and start by creating a, uh, an amp and a cabinet. So again, this is going to be a very basic one. It's not going to be a really in-depth uh, preset. But what I like to do first is turn on the amp and turn on the impulse response so that when I select an amp, you're going to hear the matched cabinet as well. Now, by default, this preset's got the JC120, which isn't bad. It's not a bad, it's not a bad amp, obviously. But I, ha I happen to like the AC30 myself, the, the Vox. Because it gives me a good rock and roll sound to start with. And we can also turn the master up just a little bit. Now, if we go over to the impulse response, you can see that we have the low cut, high cut, and level. I see no reason to change any of that right now. But what I do want to stress is that you do want to make sure that you're saving as you work with the uh, preset, as you're building it. Because you never know. If you have a crash or if you run out of battery power or something like that, you never know what's going to happen. Next thing, I'm going to go and I'm going to select uh, the effects block. And I am going to get an RC boost just to give it a little more grit. So that's before, this is after. Now what I also like to do because I'm building up to this is I do like to put on a little bit of noise reduction. So I like to go over to the noise gate and turn that on, but I am very, very careful about it. I don't want to kill off any sustain when I'm holding a note. I don't want it to accidentally just uh, fall out of place there. So uh, again, make sure that you are saving as you go along here. We've saved again. Uh, at this point, uh, you can see that for some reason the delay is all the way over here. I'm going to click and drag that all the way back to the end of the signal path. In fact, I'm going to put it before the reverb and we will get to that in a second. Uh, but what I'd also like to do is just experiment a little bit with modulation here. So I'm going to go to the modulation block. I'm going to turn that on. Let's see, maybe let's take a look at that Univibe there. No, that isn't doing it for me. Maybe the Phase 90. Or the Phase 100. Or, you know, we can just go with, like, say, the flanger. Or we can just have nothing at all. That's just, it's up to you. That's the whole magic of this. You don't, you're not married to the, the effects. You can always change what effect you want and where you want it. In this case, I just want a good, solid rock and roll sound. Uh, the EQ section, I don't see much of a need to really do anything there. Uh, because I kind of like the EQ curve now, but what if I'm going to make any adjustments, I'll typically do it to the amp first. Like I'll I'll bring the bass up, I'll bring the treble up, and I will cut back a little bit. That's a really nice rock and roll sound, right? So from there, let's go to the delay, and I absolutely want delay. I do love the way that sounds, but let me let me just show you what the, the pan delay sounds like. So you can get into some trouble with that for sure. The, the digital is really nice too. But typically what I like to do is pull the feedback back a bit and the echo level. 
Yeah, that's good. I don't like delay to overtake everything. I like it to just complement the sound. Uh, and then finally, I'm going to go to the reverb. And um, I do love a good spring reverb, but the hall is really nice. But again, you don't want it to sound like you're in your shoe, right? So let's uh, pull that pre-delay back. Maybe the liveliness. In fact, actually, uh, let's bring the decay back a bit too. Now we could actually go back to the delay and maybe go to the analog. And let's pull that. Let's pull that intensity back. Yeah, there we go. Just a little bit of, just a little bit. And that is pretty much how you can build a preset very quickly inside of the Mighty Space. Do make sure though that you are saving it. Again, guys, I know this is a very basic preset. I could go all wanky all over the place if I wanted to on this one, but the point is, is that I wanna show you how easy it is to build a preset inside of the Mighty Space, but also to show you a couple of other things you can do with it. So working with presets, check this out. So one thing you can do is you can share your preset. So you can share by creating a QR code that another Mighty Space user can then scan and bring into their Mighty Space. So you can share presets amongst yourselves, which is really cool. You can also change the patch level as well. So you can change the patch level, select it and then turn it up if you want to, and then save it and you're good to go there. The other thing you can do though, and this is something I think that's really cool, is if I'm working with presets on say the Mighty Space. So if I'm on the Mighty Space and I start tapping through the presets and you can see that I'm, I'm not touching the screen right now, I'm just doing this from the, the amp itself. You can see I've got to go through all seven of the presets before I can get back to say the first preset, but I want to just have two presets that I can just toggle between them. What I can do, like let's say I want uh, presets one and six, okay? I don't know what's on six, but that's okay. It doesn't matter. This is for example, I can go to active, select that, and now you can see that all of the presets are now highlighted. I can then deselect the ones I don't want. So in this case, I'm just selecting preset one and preset six. Hit the active button again, and now if I use the channel foot switch, if I use the, I mean, the channel uh, button on the Mighty app, I can toggle between them at will. So if you're using the NMP2 foot switch, which I'll show you in another video, you can really set this up and make it your mighty space. So you can toggle between those two presets really quick. So I think that is just like one of the best things about working with presets on the mighty space. But as always, don't forget to save your preset as you're making it. But I invite you to explore all of the other things you can do with presets on the Mighty Space. This is just scratching the surface. But we could get really weird if we wanted to. Like, let's say we could go to modulation and we could turn that flanger back on. Just remember that you need to work with the volume to make sure that you're not uh, overdriving because you don't want digital distortion, but that's just something to keep in mind as you're working with the Mighty Space and you're building your presets. But that's essentially how you do it. With a little practice, you'll be creating your own presets for the Mighty Space in no time at all. Now be sure to come back for the next video where I'm going to take you through probably one of the most exciting features inside the app, the Jam Tracks. You're definitely going to want to check this out because it is so much fun. We'll see you in the next video.